We spoke recently to Rob Wilson, the world's leading driver coach, about his philosophy of racing and about why he does what he does. Here's some more. When you look at the telemetry right now, it's like being at a restaurant and, and you've got a, uh, you know, there's, there's 10 items on there. Now, so you're going to select from those 10 items. You know there's other food out there somewhere, but out of that, you're just going to take those items. So yeah. once you've felt it, you can start to see it. And once you see it, and once you've felt it and timed it, because this is the next thing, is there a value in it? Does yes. the car stop sooner? Is that corner slightly shorter uh, in doing it? You have to do it, I don't know, 50 times over to, to then say, ah, every time I do this with a brake pedal or every time I do this with the steering, the car stops a fraction better or it, 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 it changes direction a fraction better. And getting that learning process into the brain. And that, of course, is what Brundingthorpe is all about because in a normal test session, so little testing in motor racing in general these days anyway, yeah. very difficult for the team to say to the driver, we want you to go out and, and evaluate different brake pedal pressures oh, yeah, for your it's, own, it's, and we're going to try and measure. So, because they're always measuring something new on the car. Exactly. So this is what coming here is all about yeah. in a road car. But I've been, I've been present when usually younger drivers on the way up, I have to say, but occasionally Grand Prix drivers have said, yeah, Rob, what you, what you kind of say is OK in a touring car, but in a race car, you just hit the brakes as hard as you can, as quickly as you possibly can. That's the way carbon brakes like to be hit, A. And B, it's the same with steering. You've got to flick the steering in to get the car to move. And, and so there is no moment when you can actually warm the car. The, the change of direction is so fast in a Formula 1 yes. car that you can't... Um, you someone can't. Who, who recently won a, a Grand Prix <laughs> this year, was was wondering that for a while, because we've got some very short braking areas here as well, and he said, well, an F1 car's going to be even shorter. Mm -hmm. Have I got time to do that? Mm -hmm. you know, and, and does it really work? And we showed him the physics of it, that still, the, if it's transferred at a certain rate, I mean, even a golf ball goes further if it gets the message at a certain rate. Now, is it just the rate of, rate of weight transfer? Are there properties in that golf ball or in the car that mean it needs to be given that message at a certain rate? We finally got it going so that he will now say that's the only way to do it. But we had time, we had days and days. Well, let's think about what happens when you hit the brake pedal pressure. Let's think about what happens to the brake fluid and how it gets into the calipers and what well, happens to the Well, it does, yeah. It's got, it's got to go through the hydraulics. So there is a time for yeah, all that Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, they push uh, the hydraulics, they push yeah. pistons that hit brake pads of, of doubtful equality. Oh, maybe it's probably pretty similar. Discs have got to be at a certain temperature. They're not at the end of a straight because you've got one on the breeze and one by the... You know, yeah. the transmission or something, and and then the the um, and then finally it goes into the disc, into the wheels, which could flex a bit. The sidewalls of the tyres, the surface comes after that, and then, although the F ones are really close on this now, I mean, with with a lot of cars, the the rear brakes get the message a bit later than the fronts. Now I think the F ones are down to you know fractions of a second. Well, they're so far back, yeah. aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> but the, the electronic is yeah. most of the, But but the, the, if if you've sat and set the brake bias at 60% front, 40% rear um, on your, let's say, normal racing car, not, not an electronic whizzy thing. And, and then you brake, well, the nose is down a bit, the rear is up a little bit, so it's not slowing down 60% from the front and 40% from the rear. It's more like pretend 70, 30 uh, being crude. Um, but then if you factor in that the rear brakes get the message a millionth later than the fronts, so down goes the nose and, and, and up comes the rear before it's got all its brake pressure. So it doesn't even get its 30% uh, from the rear, more like 25. You know. So if you, if you introduce the brake just by a fraction before, you know where this is going, before the nose has gone down, before the rear has completely come up, it's got full braking. Yeah. You get this little... This little parachute. Uh, and effect. didn't there was a moment, I think, a few years ago, was it the Hecky Kovalainen era at McLaren, when McLaren actually did a comparison of yeah, yeah, we did. Kovalainen we, versus Hamilton. Yeah, we did that. Just on yeah. pedal application. Yeah, yeah, indeed. And, and what, what were the. Well, we did was, find, you know, that, 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 that Lewis was introducing the car a fraction more to the brakes and, and it did stop slightly shorter. But see, if you look, if you're looking at telemetry and you say, well, we want to see, you know, 120 bar within 0.2 of a second, and if you're not doing that, you're using the brakes. Not, you're not using the brake yeah. pro properly. And then you say, well, it, we, if we're introducing it, you know, we're taking 0.22 of a second to get there. And because we had a bit more rear brake, we didn't go to 120 bar, we only went to 100, 100 bar. Oh, we're making these numbers yes. up yeah, uh, there. And, and so that on the telemetry would not look correct. But then you measure how well that car slowed down over the next 70 metres and it stopped a bit shorter. You know. yeah. But talking a driver into going, I don't know, when you're staring death in the face. It's a bit like having a lower minimum speed, but actually 
having that, the car straighter and yes, accelerating faster. Yes, because they'd say, well, if you're 5k faster in the middle of a corner, you'll be 5k faster down yeah, the rest of the straight. Doesn't work. Well, well, it can do, but but that corner's probably gone a little longer, and so now it depends what limit people are on. Mm. Uh, that would be faster than someone who came to a halt in the middle of the corner. And, and had a very short corner because mm. the guy that kept his foot in it would be faster. But talking ultimate to ultimate, yes, it's a s similar sort of thing. That, um, yeah, yeah, similar. Tell me about the survival instinct, something that you also speak about. Well, if, if you move your body like this, and it's a mistake, it can be a pretty big mistake. You can find yourself reacting to it. If you move it like that, followed by a bit more, if it's a mistake, it's a very small mistake. And if you've made a the, the, a very small mistake, then your survival instinct is less likely to sort of crop up for the next corner. You go a bit too fast into a corner, um, and it spins, or the back end comes out. Um, you haven't, you have gone over the limit to find out. You've the corrected limit. the slide, though. You've you got, got away the slide. with it. Yeah, got away with it. The next, you say, well, okay. The next time you come to that corner, you don't automatically go straight to what was the limit. You're not quite sure where that point was where it started to happen. Mm. So you end up going a bit slower. So you not only pay for it the first time, but you pay for it the next lap as well, or the following lap. And it won't necessarily be just on that corner. You'll have given yourself a fright there, and then three corners later you think, oh, I just better be a little careful here. So it's a bit slower. So you pay for it at least once, maybe twice, uh, with the survival instinct. So if you can move your body in the, in the most subtle of ways, the chances of that mistake happening are reduced. And therefore the next corner is good, the next corner is good, and you can just keep reeling off those laps.